on this episode of the Roundtable Podcast, brought to you by Pre Extreme. 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 <laughs> Sam Adams. We had Coach Deegan on amazing, amazing episode on Danny. Yeah, there's so many nuggets and takeaways here. You're gonna be Become a higher high performer in all walks of life. I would say if you're uh, an aspiring uh, coach or in a leadership position, you need to you know get out some paper and take down some notes. Yeah, this is a banger episode. Uh, if you're an athlete, I think uh, Coach uh, Coach Deegan, someone that you'd want to coach you in life. Yeah, I got to tell you, this is the exact reason why I basically uh, harassed him to come to the gym <laughs> and do a podcast with me. This is exactly why. So uh, roll the tape. Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. Extreme Pre. Extreme. Extreme. <laughs> and Sam Adams. We got a special guest in the building. Uh, wait till you see this credential list right here, right? And he's a three scooper. Yeah, boy. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't, hey, we're, not, we're not advising that, <laughs> yeah. especially with the new Pre Extreme. All right, so we got Father. Old school gym member, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> former college baseball player, runner up what? as a national title as a player, three what? time national title winner as an assistant coach, what? current long tenured coach at Denison University, what? <laughs> <laughs> author of Let It Rip, what? public speaker, what? co-host of uh, the Coach Clinic podcast with what? myself, Dustin and Treadway, and you'll have to give him a dog for this one. All right. Just bench press 250 easy when I spotted him the other day. Dog. That's dog. A dog. Coach Mike Deegan. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Save the best for last. Oh, yeah. I was like, I was, putting, was good. I was putting this together and I was like, he just hit 250 easy for five the other day. I need to put that at the That's end. really good. I was like, Cole's yeah, going to love that. Smooth. You yeah. have been looking more yoked. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So, Tis the season. Hey, a Coach, taller. you ever been on the round table? I have not. No, it's this my first time. Yeah. With, oh. with some legends. All right. That's right. Yeah. The G cast or whatever. That yeah, a long right? time ago. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, all right, Coach. For guys that don't know you, give us a little bit of background. You're a baseball guy. You've been in, in it for a long time, but it's like – Where'd you grow up at? Where'd it start at? Where'd you get the swag from? Like, you know what I mean? Give us a yeah, little background. Yeah, I'm originally from Washington, PA, a little town about 25 miles south of Pittsburgh. I uh, grew up playing all sports. Baseball and basketball were kind of my two loves. And in, in high school, probably was more of a basketball player than I was a baseball player. I uh, went to Marietta College, played ball there. Uh, worked a real job, I always say, for a couple of years with Coca-Cola. Uh, that's a whole nother What'd you story. do with Coca-Cola? Oh, nice. I, 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 I was a salesman. So yeah. I, uh, I, would, I would go. Uh, Slanging a syrup, boy. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so, so a different kind of Coke, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had, uh, yeah, had Walmarts and Kroger's and Giant Eagles and those types of stores. I, I can't imagine Mike coming in with the polo trying oh, to get some Do you still packs. have the Coca-Cola polo? I, I don't. I oh, don't. Man. I had a, I had a Coca Cola van though. That was oh, a nice. perk of the job. Yeah, That's epic. Yeah, and that a gas is card. epic. And a gas card, right? It's so, so epic. But yeah, yeah. So I did that, and then when I was at Coke, I was taking some classes because I didn't I didn't like my gig there, and I was going to try to get be a high school coach or coach and teacher something like that, and uh, that's when Marietta called, and I got into the game. Hell yeah! So, was that a bit? Was that a hard call because you have like you're with a big company, probably has stock, yeah. probably has all that, and it's like. And then you go to the passion. That's where it trips a lot of people up, right? Yeah, you know, especially kind of, you know, we've talked about this, like with generational type mm -hmm. things. Uh, yeah, my family, I was making, I was making a lot of money for, for, you know, for my demographic. And my dad would say, it's Coca-Cola, it's not going anywhere. What do you, you know, what are it's you true. doing? Like it's, you know, you're going to have a job for the rest of your life, da, 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 da. And I just couldn't, st I just didn't like it, didn't enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I took a pay cut and took a leap. And, um, you know, I think I, I tell everyone at some point in your life, you have to take a jump. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think you take these jumps just, uh, you know, willy nilly just to do it. But you'll know when it's right. And then you have to have the courage to make that move. And I can't tell you that that move right there changed the whole trajectory of my life. And not just not just, you know, in sports or whatever, but just led me to my wife and to happiness this, to, this, to this happiness <laughs> and fulfillment. You know, I, I really believe that. So what, uh, what, like, what was your upbringing like? Like you said, your, was your parents like more traditional, blue collar? Yeah, like yeah, what? yeah. So my, uh, my, my dad uh, ran a, a, a jewelry store. Uh, he was, they were watchmakers. Uh, my pap uh, had a store on, in, Market, cool. in Market Street in Wheeling, West Virginia. Oh, nice. A little, a little store right there that was, you know, it was great for our family for a lot of years. Uh, my mom, um, she, got, she was a teacher, but not until I was like in sixth or seventh grade. So my mom, though, my mom was the hardest worker I ever met. She would work. She was a teacher by, by day, 
And then at night, she would take um, take bets at, at the Meadows. There's a racetrack there. Let's go. So she would go. It's Mom's called, a hustler. Bet. So she would work. I mean, it's crazy. She would get up. I mean, she'd be up at 536 every day, go to work, 430. She'd come home. She'd stay home for like two hours and then back out. Uh, probably three or four nights a week she would do that. And plus, on Saturday, she'd work what they call a double. She worked the afternoon and the evening shift. So anyways, just, um, yeah, just that. So that was the upbringing, right? Just... Yeah, sports family, very traditional. My dad's a yeah. Wheeling. My family's a lot of Valley guys, uh, Martins Ferry, Wheeling. Um, so, yeah, you, you guys know that demographic. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just – and so when I'm working at Coke – They I've, thought you I've, hit I've the lotto, it. bro. Yeah, <laughs> made, you know, so. Uh, was that – was that – you knew in your heart that you needed to change, obviously, because you wanted mm -hmm. to try to, like, give a chance to do what you love. But, like, was that a hard talk with the old man? I, it, it wasn't – I think at first it was because, you know um, – yeah, it was just hard. It was just hard for him to comprehend. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, why? Like, why would you leave a job? And when I'm saying it was big money, it wasn't big money like what we would consider it now. But it was yeah. probably a, you know, a mid fifty thousand dollar job yeah. somewhere in that neighborhood. And and but you're to, young. It's context him, is the valley, bro. It, it, yeah, yeah. And to him, that's 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 a lot of money. That's you know. And uh, so yeah. So anyways, um, that was a little tough. But then, but then he's he's also. Like he was also the biggest sports fan you're ever gonna find, so yeah. it, he was able to quickly shift. But it was just, I think it just hit him a little bit. And um, I always say that, you know, when you make jumps in life, there there'll be people that try to talk you out of things. That, and I, I wouldn't say he was on that front, but once I did it, then he was a full supporter. He was, yeah. yeah, he wasn't rooting for failure. You know, sometimes when you make a jump, people will root for the failure almost. Like, watch this guy's about to implode. Yeah, it wasn't that case. It He's was a just, cheerleader immediately. Yeah, huh? yeah, he was just more. It, it looked like you know. You grew up, they grew up with depression parents. Like, they grew up in the depression. Yeah. So, there's a value of money. And it's like, wait a minute, what, you know, this, this is security. a security. Yeah, security. security. <laughs> and this is going to be a little bit more of an untraditional path. Um, but, anyways, yeah, it was, it was all good, though. All love once, once I made the decision. But at yeah. first, there was a little bit of why. I just think there's a, that why in the road for so many people. And they're so scared to take this way so what so i want to know your thought and i think this is a huge point because i think there's so many people that encounter this like what was your thoughts process exactly like okay if i go this way is it why just go back to what i was doing or was it like did you not even really have that like this is just what i have to give myself a chance to do you know what i mean because yeah. i think there's they sit at people sit yeah. at that why and go you know and they're just scared they're scared dude they're, they're scared it, it was um I would I'd like to tell you that there was like this incredible clarity. There wasn't. And mm -hmm. so I think that's, but that's also maybe encouraging for no, someone but, who's listening, yeah. right? Cause it's not, it's not like this big pool that like shifts you that way. It was just going like, I'm, I'm, I'm miserable at this job. Like I, I don't like it. So I was already he hedging there cause I was mm -hmm. taking classes at Duquesne on set. So I'd work 50 hours a week with Coke through the week. And then I take classes at Duquesne trying to get out of that trap. But the thing How long were you there at Coke? Two years. Two years. Okay. Two full years. Yeah. Okay. So two years. So, so yeah. one one full year just working at Coke. One year in, I'm like, this isn't it. Okay. So I start taking classes at Duquesne, trying to like think about getting out. And um, <laughs> but yeah, anyways. That, but then when I got the, the opportunity, Coach Brewer called me and said, "Hey, I got over 100 applicants, but I really want you to consider this job." Yeah, I was like, "This is something I want. I want to. I want to jump into." So I didn't. Ha I didn't know what the next steps were. That's maybe that's the lesson of all this. Yeah, I didn't know. That's I, okay. I just knew like I, ha I, I, there was momentum, and I let's let's give this a shot. And I'd be lying probably if if I didn't say in the first couple of months you're going like, "What the hell did I just do? Like, why? Did <laughs> I, why did I do this? Like, how's this? Like, I moved away. Like, what am I?" And uh, but man, I can't like now on the other side of it, I can't tell you how how happy I am. Well, it's something awesome. that you talk about too with like. Imagine the result first and then reverse engineering how yeah. you're going to get there because it's much more – it seems much more attainable because then once you assign like a – whether it's like a dollar amount or what exactly you have to do, you're like, oh, my God, it's this is actually like realistic. You know what I mean? Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. So what were like those first few months of getting into coaching like? Like what were you doing? I, I mean, I, I was – so it's where I played. So there was a familiarity with like gotcha. the systems and things like that. I would say that – I will say that it was um, – it's completely different being on that side of it. It's completely different. I was really lucky. Uh, the guy I played for is, is a legend, a guy by the name of Don Shally. was uh, ABCA Division Three Coach of the Century. Um, just kinda, Legitly, I mean, it, le le coach, le of yeah, century. coach of the Century. of the Century. And that was a different time. He's called baseball. is kind of getting started, and he was at the forefront of that. So it was great. When you go to the convention with him, like the, the, like the legends, Mike Martin of Florida State. They, coach Shally, like they, I, I didn't go with Coach then, but I was with his wife. 
Um, and they all knew, like, oh, hey, Sue. Like, all these, like, the legends of the game, no coach. So, anyway, so he was there. So, he's for, an OG OG. He's an, he's an OG of all OGs. And That's sick. So, anyways, but he was there for the first year when I, when I got there. When I got back, he died that, that year. He, had can, he got cancer. and oh, wow. He retires cancer and passed away. Damn. But but to be around him for a year and see him in a, in a different in a different light, too, was was also really cool. So, yeah, I was just in the mix trying to figure out how to do this coaching thing. I was way, way, way underqualified. I, I will say that. Coach Brewer, could <laughs> he could have taken a lot – people with more experience that that knew what they were doing that that, that knew that, that they wanted that path too because my toe was in the water just i was dipping it at first mm -hmm. but then you learn quickly you can't have your, you got to be all in you know so um yeah i was just trying to survive so what were like a few like uh big things that you took away from that because obviously you we were what probably like 25 yeah as far as from him uh, yeah from coach or just yeah. just in general just yeah yeah i i would say um the thing that 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 Mary, like I, I always say, like my my maybe like flex if I have a flex with this whole thing is that Marietta teaches you how to like it, how to run a high level baseball program, any level, whatever. Like you you can if you have been in the Marietta uh, system ethos, however you want to say it, like you you won't be shook in many environments because they really do it at such a high level. Like with the OG of Don Shally, yeah, yeah. with what coach how Coach Brewer operates. So um, I think what I've always have felt really good about, whether whatever dugout I'm in, like whoever is across the, 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 the stadium from me, um, it's not even an egotistical thing. I just feel like I belong. I, I never feel overmatched. And I think if that makes any sense, like that's he a really, prepared you for that. That's yeah. a very powerful for, thing. For the like system I, prepared the, you for that. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, don't, I never go into a game thinking like we, yeah, I, I feel prepared and, and, and ready for that moment. I think that's how some of those coaching trees get so gangster, bro, because if there's somebody that sets a tone like that, and now, what, 20 years later, you mm -hmm. still feel that way? Ultimate confidence. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's it's awesome. Ultimate confidence. And, and here's, uh, you know, kind of shifting gears a touch. What I, what I think is really interesting right now is, um, you know, th there's, there's a lot more remote work. There's a lot more, you know, and I'm not, I'm not bagging any of that. I'm just saying um, some of that tough love has gone mm -hmm. and, and, and not gone. It's, it's, it's in a different shape. And I, I see a lot of young coaches now that kind of need that that mentoring or, or young professionals for that matter. Like it's and those are difficult conversations to have. And I've, I've been on the other end of those difficult conversations. Um, but my goodness, they're so valuable as you as you get into to my age demographic now. You know, I I worry that some of those hard lessons aren't being learned young in the co in, young in the professions because mm -hmm. of this new model we have or the fear of offending or the fear of, you know, having to watch how I say it and when I say it. And some of the best, my best learning moments were taken to chewing. Um, that probably wasn't the most politically correct thing. And I'm not giving a, I'm not condoning just going off the yeah. cuff, calling yeah. someone, you know. But you learn a lot of valuable lessons from from people like that who will who will coach you hard yeah. and, and mentor you hard for that matter. I think a uh, coach, a good coach, is going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, and is going to talk direct to you, especially if you're being a little bit soft. You know what I mean? And I think that. Uh, our new coach at Granville, I, I went and watched some stuff the other day and it reminded me a lot of how you operate. Mm. It's like this, this, that, everyone's on a hop, everybody's mm. moving, extra running here, extra that. And it was like, and they know he's a baseball guy. Yeah. Like, it's not like I'm just taking this on the side because I like coaching something like it was open so I can get my stipend. It was like, you can feel his energy. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It is what my, but he also played high level baseball personally too, as did you. You know mm. what I mean? So I think it's like, I went, I went to Deegan's practice once. Bro, it's fucking, and it was impressive. And I hadn't been to, I don't even think I had ever been to a college mm -hmm. baseball practice before, to be honest. And so, I, not that I didn't expect that, but I just love the way it operated. Mm -hmm. And then I went and saw Ohio State and some other stuff. And so I was like, oh, this is like the standard of how shit operates. And I'm seeing the same thing the other day when I was at the high school. And I was like, oh, okay. That's a good sign. Yeah, it's a, a good, good sign. sign. I, I, first thing I thought was, Deegan and Justin are gonna get along yeah, just well. That's good. So, yeah. so what was it like whenever you got like uh, your first like head coaching job? Like you've learned how the system operates, how the program should be like you know running. What was it like for you whenever you finally got the reins and now you get to craft that yourself? You know, it, it's um, th there's a gift and a curse of being in, in good programs and around great leaders. Um, and the fa the fact that a lot of people then want to try to recreate exactly what they were into, you know? So a lot of people, um, like I, I know my first couple years, coach Shally is like, he was a world war two guy, military, like, you know, just 
grumpy old man, right? Yeah. Like that's, they called him the old man. Like he was, he wasn't that old. Like look back, he wasn't even that old when, I, when he coached me. Um, and Coach Brewers from from uh, Inner City Baltimore, like he's a fighter, like a known, like rough and tumble kind of guy. And I saw the success they have, and so I, I would I would be lying once again if I said at first I'm trying to maybe mirror some of their things. But you know we've talked about it here off off air, but. You know, authenticity is a superpower, right? Mm -hmm. And so what you have to do, though, is you take all those lessons and you, and you have, like, their system and some things in place, but then you're in a new environment. Like, the way Denison operates isn't the way Marietta operates. Denison's in Granville. Marietta's in Marietta. The clientele's different. Um, I'm different than those men. So I think the, the biggest thing I learned was, you know, the, the, as close as you can get to just being you, the better off you're going to be because that comes through really well through in recruiting, and connecting with players and at the end of the day coaching so much just about connecting with people and if you're trying to be somebody you're not even if that model works if you get what i'm saying like yeah. that it's so, not gonna work the same so many you, you know bill belichick's tree isn't great you know yeah um and, and they're all trying to emulate the patriot way other places and i think a lot of those people just get lost in trying to be bill belichick when that's probably not who they are yeah there's only one bill belichick only one OG. <laughs> yeah trayvon um, so like, just like to touch on what he said, like, I just think like, like coaches, like someone, like every time I see him, like he's someone, I feel like he like lightens up the room. Like I always think like as an athlete, like he's someone that I would want to be coached by. Same. And so like, I, so like, I, I always just see like the smile on your face and everything. And I think that's super important, like as a coach for players, because they need someone, you know, that's like, you know, that's going to support them, everything. So yep. like, I want you to talk about like, just like the importance, like when it comes to like the recruiting and like you know, building, like, the team chemistry and everything, like, with your players, like, on how you can, like, be able to just, like, engage with them and, like, yeah. on a high level. I, I appreciate you saying that, and it's a good check for me because sometimes I don't know if I always bring that same energy to our team. Like, I, and I need, I need to keep keep reminding he myself. He thinks he's that. too mean. No, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 yeah, there's an edge there, you know. There's uh, yeah. an edge. And and sometimes you're, um, you know, I don't know, maybe on guard to touch. Yeah. And, and uh so yeah, from a, from a recruiting standpoint, I will say that the thing that we I think we've done a really good job with is is that we don't really recruit, we just tell our story, mm -hmm. and then and then we try to attract people who want that similar experience. So, I, it's the same thing of being authentic. Like I, like people say, like where do you see me playing? I'm like I don't know. Like <laughs> you, 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 come on in, watch us practice. We think you have the skill set that that can handle this. You know, meet some of our guys. Uh, the pride that we take as a coaching staff is that it's it's kind of hopefully what you're seeing, Trey. It's a collection. Like the, I always say, we have a bunch of good dudes. Like they're from different walks of life. That doesn't mean they're angels. That doesn't mean that they don't <laughs> get in trouble. But they're good guys. So that's how we try to recruit. I just I try to speak the truth, and then just let it ride. Yeah. Well, I think people can feel that on you. And the part about lighting up the room, which is why I was like trying to get us on a show together, right? Yeah. Just to get reps together because and trying to get him here to work out because I was like, every time I, cause I ran into Mike probably oh, eight or 10 yeah. years ago, lunging and, and we would have, I would see coach Hatem, see Deegan, we'd have conversation, but every time I would have a conversation with him, it'd be quality, right? Mm -hmm. Like yep, and yep. I might see you once every couple months and then our kids, you know, are roughly the, our youngest or kind of the close in age, my youngest and his oldest. And like, so I was like, why is this not guy not in our building if he's this close? And so like, I kind of like would chirp at him. Like, hey, you know, next level's right down the street, coach. No, yeah, it, 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 it was a little tougher coaching than that. Cause I was asking, I was like, man, I'm, you know, I just, I just, man, I'm kind of hitting the wall here. He said, "When are you gonna stop bullshit and just come on over? <laughs> like we're fi like we're five minutes we're away. Five, we're right here, man. Like, come Especially on once up. we yeah. move close, yeah, there's no like, there's what, no reason. Like, not. What, are, what are we doing? And yeah, that honestly that that's been uh and and this building has been a it's been a life changer for me. Honestly, I, and I don't I don't use that term lightly, but it's it's um there's something about being around good young energy and, and just good energy in, in general. And I I have now like shifted my gear my my uh, my thought process when I was younger." I used to think working out was taken away from like my job. I'd be like, man, every time when I'm working out, I could be watching film. I could be recruiting. I could be thinking about things. And now I will tell any young coach that that is probably the most important that you can do It's part. It's part of your job to Hell stay yeah. healthy, fit and stay of sharp mind. I mean, a lot of times I'm quiet in here a lot of times while I'm working out, but I'm just, I'm like, I'm, I'm working through the day. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm going as I, cause you get, I don't know what it is about a hard workout or whatever, like clarity just pops in, into your mind. So do you ever uh, do you ever like work out with your team? Uh, not not a ton. I I, um, I I don't. Well, one one we have some rules like the the off season training. Okay. Like off season training, we're not allowed in there. Mm. 
in season training. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, 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 I let them have that space. Like I, one, yeah, I think I think I didn't do it at first because I think I lost my chops a bit. So there's like a little bit of <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't because work. if you just benched with the guys, well, I, right? I know where Cole's going with this because in high school, my football coach loved him to death, but he always would uh, basically like, dude, if we if we were just hitting curls or doing something, he'd just fucking hop in with us. He'd pick him up and say, "I can out, I can outdo you guys," <laughs> and he would always he would always talk about how he was trying to get a bicep pump and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the the respect level of just seeing that him having fun and buying in with that culture, it was like super important for yeah. us. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good for me to think about. You know, it's uh, because I think the guys would look for look for, look forward to it. like if they if they you know, and I know they're not doing a crazy bench press or whatever, yeah. but if it's like one of those days and you're like, well, arm we know. Up. We know yeah. Deegan's going to be in here banging with us. Like yeah. it could be one of those things they start to look forward to, that then takes it off the super coach pedestal to where you're a bro for a sec. Which I know you have other times like that, but that that could be interesting for <laughs> yeah, your guys. Yeah. It, it's it's a, it's a really you know interesting thought. I it, it is it is strange because I do sometimes put up a wall, not a wall, but I don't know. It's tough. Like I, you're always um, not not just so much with a workout, but you're always walking this line. Hmm. Um, I, I, I've, you know, we're coming up on starting our season a week from today. You got difficult decisions to make, like yeah. difficult. And you know, we have 35 healthy guys on a roster right now, and only nine are going to play. And so you're always like this interesting guard of, I, know, I never want to show favoritism. I never want yeah. someone to think I bro out with this guy and that's why he plays or I know his dad. But it can also be to a detriment too, by the way. So I'm not, I'm not using that as an excuse. But over time, you put that wall up and sometimes you forget – that you are allowed to go onto the other side yeah. of it now and then, then you know what I mean? I, I don't know if that makes sense. Well, or I, I think <clears> if I think about if somebody was recruiting me, if those you could just unplug it and oh. plug it other side. Uh, if I was thinking about somebody recruiting me and they roll in looking like Deegan does now, all yoked up, I'd be like, oh, okay, wait, coach is still taking care of himself. And then like on Wednesdays, He's in there close grip, and even if it's for 15 minutes, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I just think, and I know we're straight fucking weightlifters, but, I mean, Trey, you played college sports. You would probably, like, like that if your coach yeah. would have rolled in and did some extra squats with you guys or something, right? Like, I yeah, mean, it's, cool. I think it'd be real cool. Yeah. yeah. So, and, I don't like, know. and, like, banging arms. I, I just have this vision. <laughs> if I were to take over a program, I would do, like, a mandatory thing of, like, a pregame arm pump. Like hey, or I've some seen baseball sort of that. guys because doing curls in the dugout. One of the coolest things that I always see that college football teams do, especially like at Northwestern and yeah. I think like Wisconsin and Oregon and shit, they have the weights on the field. And yep. I actually, uh, uh, the dude at Tennessee, what's his name? Vrabel. Oh yeah. Vrabel will always get a pump in with yep. the team before the game. I'm like, that looks so fucking awesome. How could you not want to play for a guy who's just trying to get yoked and get a juicy <laughs> pump before going to play? Yeah, this is why in my even athlete program we still bang arms on Friday. These yeah. kids still want to come look on, good. Come on. It's a like, big thing, uh, It's right? not just about playing baseball or football or whatever it is. It doesn't matter what level you're at. Banging arms, bro, on Flex Friday. Yeah. Right. Like, right. those kids, are they're off school today. A couple of them are like, hey, we'll be in at 8. You know, it's arm day. Like, I mean. There, there's, sick. There, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's uh, you know, there's so many benefits to strength training. One of it is just confidence. Camaraderie. It's com confidence. Com camaraderie, yeah. com confidence. I mean, it's a Deion Sanders, right? Look good, feel good, play good type percent. thing. You know, so there, there is, there is definitely. It's not just the science behind it and the yeah. data behind it. You know, it, you need a, you need a combo of both. You I need, think. A, yeah, I think that's lost a little th bit. Right that has now. to, you know, in so many ways, right? Because yeah. that, that uh, we know so much more about sports performance and how to train. We're trying to create better movers, all those things. But yeah, there's something about having a, a bicep vein that's still. <laughs> <in there. laughs> Hell yeah! yeah. Pull that ain't never gonna yeah. not be cool. No, never. Well, I know Dustin even saw some pushback whenever he went out with his um, wrestling specific, and he had like cheat curls on Fridays, which is like an old Arnold overload. And people were like, "That's not helping in wrestling. Why are you having them swing curls?" He's like, "Cause they do a lot of hand fighting, right, and pulling and yeah. stuff like that." He's like. Telling me that this guy, the curls 135 for 10, he ain't yanking this guy's head off, like, and looking yoked. So it's like, it's funny that I agree some of that stuff needs to make it into it just because there is an element of just brodom. 
that has to happen out good here. Word. Good word choice. Yeah. yeah. You could use that on the arms yeah. army. Facts. And straight it's up, like, I think if your team knew that you benched, like, 255 or, like, 315 or whatever, yeah. they would be, like, respect Fuck coach. Yeah. Respect. Oh, yeah. You need to yeah. add that to your bio. You, <laughs> like, you, you, <laughs> yeah. you like, size down on your polos. Your arms looking yoked. You're like, yeah, I just got a juicy pump, guys. So, so I was going good. I was going to leave here and watch film, but I need to go. Yeah, you need to go live. I was going to handle things that I think are important, but I need to scrap yeah. that. Today. Well, what's right. funny is, though, I think that when you hear younger guys that you know we're all athletes go this is what we'd like to see yeah. it's it's a probably good yeah. feedback though yeah. dude all i'm picturing now is him hitting this got a report out and it says bench 255 for 10 today yeah yeah no, <laughs> hey, circle it. Circle it. dude hey, yeah. whenever don uh whenever don hit his world record squad like 551 i was like don because he's the teacher at columbus state i was like yo you need to go up on your whiteboard just write 551 and circle it yeah yeah <laughs> at 181 at yeah. 57 yeah, yeah. I was like, how uncomfortable would that for, i know don how uncomfortable would that be for him oh yeah. so epic i was yeah i was asking about it today and he it was like hard for him it's like choking getting out of him like yeah. Come on, man. He's yeah. like, I just I saw myself on that list, man. It was like hard to believe. You know, because I told him, I was like, I was bugging Don for years to come back and train with us. Not come back, but like just come and train because I knew he wasn't that far away. He lives in Lancaster. And dude, he helped me for no, like I don't even know why he helped me. I mean, I was a fucking train wreck when I met Don. <laughs> and so like he really helped me like pull it together. And so I felt the need to get him in here. He hadn't competed since 1987. <laughs> Legit, legitly, he had hair then and a mullet, I think. And it was like, and he was the first strength coach at Ohio, at Ohio University, like as an intern. Like he's got some crazy history. Yeah. But I, as soon as he got in, within the first week, he was like, "I'm back." Oh yeah, yeah. Lo just instantly loved it. And he, I was like, "Dude, this ha it added to his life. He's got a locker room again. He's competing. He's in it and teaching it, which feels completely different. Just a really good dude. That that's probably one of my favorite." things that have happened by us having the crew is getting a person that helped me that didn't know me that helped me immensely when I was you know first moved here that then now I, I feel like I can you know give back something to his life too it's, pre it's pretty cool there, there's something about the uh the, the people that, that get attracted to it. once again if you're just yourself if you're but you think about the collection of people that come through through these build, oh, through this yeah. building you know it's it's uh, everyone's a little bit different. Everyone's doing different things, but I mean, from guys like Don to you know, you we could keep we could keep running the list to, yeah. to bigger names, they're, but yeah. they're all the common thread is they're 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 good dudes and good yeah. women. And they're just, about it. They're about it. Just good people, right? And but you can only do that. You can't trick this place. No, because <laughs> you, you get washed out if if you can't if you can't real stick quick. With it. Real quick, uh, back to you, Danny. Yeah, um, what kind of like, uh, what are some of the rules and systems that you have for your team when like things get hard? Like, like let's say you uh, you go on like on a losing streak, or someone, or if you have a player that's like one for one for thirty or something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or they're you know committing a bunch of errors. Like, what what are some of the things that you or how do you approach that with that person in the team? Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess every situation is unique. Um, look, it's a competitive environment, and if you're making too many of those errors and not getting enough hits, then then you're you, you know you won't be playing, you won't be starting. But how long is your leash, Mike? Oh, I, once on the again, yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be different. I mean, our goal was for we're just trying to put the best team out there when yeah. we play a game to try to win, right? That's a good answer. But in but behind the <laughs> but behind the scenes. That's where you're. That's where you're going to work with people and and and, and work with them there. But baseball is that you know heavy heavy game of failure, as we all know. Um, th there's there's such a a it's, there's a reason why there's so many rituals and and superstitions in baseball. Yeah. Because those people just have, they have to just stick to the stick to the course a lot of times. You know, just because mm -hmm. because that one for ten could not be the it, it could be okay. Like meaning mm -hmm. they're hitting the ball hard. They're just getting some bad breaks. Yeah. So there's sometimes you don't need to do anything besides keep rolling sometimes you need to go back to under the shop and get under the hood and see and see what's going on and dig in there a little bit but um in college athletics a lot of it's going to be driven by their desire to to improve and get better and 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 look themselves in the mirror uh because once we start playing i'm not trying to i'm not trying to duck your answer but or duck your question but we're flying i mean we're, we're gonna play you know we'll play six games in five days in florida so there's not like this time to like cuddle up to somebody yeah. and say hey like let's work on this or that i mean we're rolling games are going so they'll have to just kind of dive in on their own and get better for sure yeah because the one thing that was sticking out was like i mean obviously from personal experience but it's just it could be so mental especially in baseball sometimes and you could suck yourself out for basically anything you do so it's like how do you bring somebody or how can you help someone come out yep. of that funk if they're yeah. so in their head yeah you know, you know it's it's it, it, look 
once again, once you get to the higher levels, like that's where talent meets talent a lot of times, and that's mm-hmm. and that becomes a different the differentiating factor mm-hmm. as who can stick with it. Um, but that's a lot of their own coping skills. I think sometimes people look to coaches like I can say things like, mm-hmm. "Danny, like you got this, man." <laughs> yeah, it only takes you so far. <laughs> yeah. if, if you're not if you're if you're not talking to yourself very good, and, you know what I mean. If you haven't put the work in, if you haven't done those things, all the pat on the backs aren't going to do it. So. I don't want to say I'm callous to that. I mean, I, I do think um, great coaches, great baseball coaches, they have an ability, though, to just exude confidence like and, and, and the overall picture, right? And they get people to believe that they're a little better than they think they are. Than, than they are. You know, so like that's kind, of, that's kind of the ethos that we're trying to create is like where collectively we think we can do some crazy, amazing things. And then hopefully you as an individual fall into it. Um, my last thing I'll say, just to wrap that up, I, I think what's I, I think we we really focus on doing what's best for the team and adding value. Like so, when we run through first base, the guys are supposed to break down, look right, left. Now it's silly. Like there may be one play a year that comes into play, but what like what my thought process is with this is, the more you do things and get out of your own head and get into the team, like it frees you up as an individual. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Like if I'm so worried about if I hit and I'm so mad at myself because I grounded out here. Whatever. But if I'm spring up the line, I think, okay, I'm going to see myself hit the bag. I'm going to break down, look right, left. Like, that's, you're doing that for the team. So, anyways, the more – all I, I just told our guys there at night, the more you can pull into these, like, crazy team philosophies we have, we're doing it for a reason because that's going to allow you as an individual to flourish as, as well. For sure. I think you said it, too. It's just, like, putting in the work preseason and the offseason and everything like that then that just, like, takes care of itself. Like, so it's it's dependent on the individual putting that in. You can't bullshit it, man. Like, once once Shows. you get to the higher levels, like, once you get to the higher levels, you can't. Like, that's that's where baseball will expose a lot of people. It's if, if you didn't play in the summer, if you didn't train, if you didn't, you know, if you weren't thinking about this a lot, you're going to break down a lot easier. I know as a player, I didn't put as my – I was first team all conference my sophomore year, just didn't, didn't go at the level I needed to go at in the offseason – and I got into a little rut. And if I were, you know, if I were to speak my truth, I would tell you that I was blaming everybody else. But it was me. Like, it was mm-hmm. me. I didn't yeah. put the time in, you know. So I, that's why I loved you know, the, the Jalen Hurts thing. I don't know if you guys saw the, their comments after the game, after the, after the Super Bowl. Like, mm-hmm. the, you know, it was like the, you know, they had the bad call. Yeah. Yeah. Jalen Hurst is like, he, I, he, yeah. goes, I don't, he goes, I don't, he goes, I like to think about what I could have done differently. He's like, I look, I look at all this as a learning opportunity. He talked to the defensive back who got the holding call. He's like, I held. Kelsey, the center, was like they were asking about the field conditions. Like both teams played on it, so high achievers like they're they're gonna they're gonna take the responsibility mm-hmm. on themselves. It's a great response. So yeah. I think that's that's kind of what I learned, and that's we're you know we say it's men's league, man. This isn't kids league, so you know we got <laughs> yeah we it's gotta dog league. So yeah. Anyways, I talked too much there. No, no you're good. good so uh, you know I remember like a lot of my coaches, they always were preaching some sort of message, whether it was about. Uh, complacency, being disciplined, you know, finishing everything, and just trying to inst- like uh, instill like these like values and like mor- morals that you can take outside of the game. Didn't have to do with what was going on on the field. It was about everything else and just trying to you know develop these people into like good like young men. So, what are some of the messages and like values that you're trying to instill? Yeah, you know, I, I um so one I, I I think sometimes you know. Like our, our job is to create these environments. And we, ha- we have some pillars in our program. Like we have four things that we that stay year to year. You know, it's the I- idea of grit, gratitude, work called Kaizen, and work called Mudita. And, um, you know, grit is physical, mental toughness, the ability to persevere. Gratitude, we say, is a readiness to show appreciation. So it's basically saying please and thank you and trying to see things through a positive lens. Uh, Kaizen is my personal life philosophy, which means continuous and never-ending improvement. And that's, you know, we're, just, we're always just trying to get better. Um, and then lastly, Mudita is, is vicarious joys. Can I be happy for another success as if it's my own? And so to me, like that, that to me is the holy grail. Like that's, that's our separating factor. Like we, there's, you get, get in a good college program, there's a crazy internal competition. You're going, you're, you're slamming heads every day with somebody. Then you may not start and that person does. Like, do you cheer for them or do you secretly hope they fail? Mm. And in our program, we really try to pull for other success. So those four things in a nutshell to me are like one of the keys to life, right? Like, because yep. like as you get older, you know, you guys are younger, but I, I, as you get older, like things get harder. Like there, there's just more people dying around you. And it's not because of just like more grandparents, mm. you know, it's just. And so you have to have that. That resilience factor is so important. You know, gratitude to me is like, man, if, if, if I live life, um, 
thinking about how bad everything is all the time. God, how can you ever be happy? You know, mm. I don't know. But so anyways, like those four things transcend baseball. Um, but I do think they're, they're the differentiating factor for us in some of our success. Yeah, amazing. Trayvon? Um, <clears throat> I'm curious, like, coaching-wise, like, what's something that you haven't done yet that you wanted to do? As, for, like, as a goal? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have, we have markers. I mean, we, you know, for us right now, our standard is to get to the World Series. Uh, we've been to the regional final the last two years. Uh, in 21, we were, you know, a game away. Last year, we were a game away from a super regional. So we, we're kind of knocking on that door. Um, but uh, yeah, and it, uh, this, this isn't loser speak. I'm not trying to do, I'm not trying to say that, but you get to a point in your career where like good coaching to me is doing the best you possibly can with the resources you have in front of you. Like, so, you know, it, uh, for me, it's like, can we just continue to, to run a better program year in and year out? Can we create a better experience for our players? And when I say better experience, I don't mean a, a easier experience. I mean a better experience. So I guess to answer your question directly, it's get to a World Series and win a national championship as a head coach. Uh, but I don't think you can hear, even hear the pause in my voice. I don't think that's like this insane driver that it once was. It's like mm -hmm. if we do the right things and create that experience, I, I just believe in my heart of hearts that it will push through. Yeah, if you, do, you keep doing this, that stuff, Mike, eventually there will be this <sighs> – just cohesiveness that will all come together with the right kid that's a freshman and senior and like you you know you'll have that all kind of line up it all clicks or you get a break like yeah, that, that's, break. That, that's the other thing you know we uh in 21 that the regional we were in had the number one team in the country the number three team in the country and we were in there you know so beat the number three team in the country twice beat the the number one team in the country once and we lost to them twice so anyways like and then last year our regional had a uh, team called Salisbury University, who are the defending national champs. Yeah, I went to that and, game. And they're national runner-up last year. So my point is, like, it, it's really fickle how, how sometimes things can line up. You get in a different bracket. And I'm not using an excuse. I'm just saying if you, if you can yeah. stay in the hunt long enough, yeah. like one day, like, things kind of open up for you. You know, no, no, you, get, sure. you get a break, you get a bounce. It's a long game. But it's all about doing the right things. Like, that doesn't just happen. No. It's through consistency. It's through hard work. It's through having a process. And then, then eventually you, you break. But – um, yeah, I'm just trying to be a better leader and better, you know, across the board. One of the things you said with high achievers, and I've always tried to think this way, and I probably have maybe the like, last 10, it's like something's happening in your business or to your squad or whatever it is. And it is easy to be like, oh, well, this guy or that program. or But you really have to be like, no matter what the external factors are, what, what, am, I, what am I doing like to counteract that? So – you know, a million people can go, well, the economy, this, or the gas is high. And I know all those things are contributing to maybe sales being lower or this, but I can't just get up and go, that's okay. You know what I mean? So I think that everybody I've operated around that has continued to have success, they all think that way because you have to try to counteract no matter what those factors are. If not, you're just giving up. Yeah. That you can acknowledge those factors. You acknowledge them. You, 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 you acknowledge them. I, so a mentor of mine says, if, if you take all the things that you can control and wrote them on, a, on the whiteboard over there, there's a m bunch of them. What time mm -hmm. you wake up, what you put in your body, yeah. like you can write all these things that are in your control. And then there's things like in, in our sport, like umpires, the weather, like yeah. all these that you can't control. But where do most average achievers, they, they sit on those three they things. Live they live on the umpire. They live on. And I, I always worry about it with kids because like they'll. Like, I'll, I'll hear, you know, kids after a game, oh, the, the ref stunk. I'm like, really? The ref stunk? That, that's why. That, you know, you haven't shot a basket in the last 10, 10 days. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, you haven't, you haven't put, but it's the ref. It's the ref that's out here that's, that's 18 years old. Well, if it's fourth grade yeah. girls, that was AG. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At the ref <rec> yeah. <laughs> on Saturday morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, but if you, I mean, you know, challenge, I, challenge, we can all challenge ourselves to that, too. Like, yeah. whether it's in business or whatever, it's like, okay, yeah, the economy's bad. Da, 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 da. Okay, but yeah. some, somebody's thriving in this. Oh, you know, there's some, opportunity all over yeah, the place. Yeah, there, there's opportunities everywhere. But if you just lean into what you can control, but that takes boldness and confidence to do that yeah. because you you eliminate those excuses, and excuses are just so they're so comforting, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, I, it was funny because uh, I was on. I've been taking this uh, little class online. It's like low key, but I'm I'm learning a lot. So low key. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Anyhow. I was in this like uh, little breakout session and uh, there was a dude in there that's, you know, doesn't have a lot of followers yet, but he's there trying to learn, but he's in fitness. And so he says, you know, I've been trying to do this for a couple of years and he gave me like nine excuses. 
And I said, you know what? I forget his name. I go, I beat you like every day. And he just looked at me. I go, you know why? Because you just gave me nine excuses and I'm just getting up at 3 a.m. <laughs> you know, because the, the, everything he said, there was holes all through it. And he took it like real well. Like, I was like, you're a, you got to remember you're against me. And you, you got to look at what I'm doing. I've been doing this a really long time, dude. He was in his 20s. So I think, I think he took it in a good way. But it just came out. I like couldn't because he's there to get better. Mm -hmm. I have I've never met him before. I, I literally was on a group chat with him for three minutes, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm in You're the class. In. And I'm in the class, but I felt like I felt like I had to coach him because I was like, dude, what you just said to me, you're never gonna fucking win. Well, I love the had to because that's that's what happens when you when you take that approach in life, and then what happens is you're attracted to people who have that similar approach. And then when you meet somebody who doesn't and you want to help them, yeah, you just want to smack them and say, like, da, 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 da. You're, you're not, look, I, you know. That ain't you're, it. You're taking a class right now. You're doing these things, but you're way off because you can take this class all you want. You're not going to grow your business yep. with all those excuses. So it's, it's, it, it becomes hard to shut it down. Like, I, I couldn't I, keep it, like, pent up. I felt bad, but. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see a version of yourself from your early, early years? Yeah, or I, no? no, because I, I never really thought like that. Because action is the only, I, that was, yeah. I just knew, I've been tweeting, it, I've been on some fire on Twitter lately. <laughs> but I'm telling you, is like, I was tweeting, like, literally, like, got to put yourself on. Yeah. Like I, I, I just knew no one was coming to save me. Yeah, I just I mean like when you started out. Yeah, but I, but I think that because the because of me, I don't know anything about this dude, right? So I can't jump to conclusions. But I just heard a lot of excuses of why it hadn't gone the way he wanted it to go, and I'm just saying, bro, you're not forcing it to go that way, motherfucker. Like I'll go for months or years and get no layups, but then when the layup comes, I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. Right now, the nerf hoop is being thrown to me, and I'm windmilling that motherfucker. <laughs> Because that's what I've been waiting on. You know what I mean? And so I think, so this also borders something else I want to ask you about, Mike, is that you carry yourself in a confident way. I think that you know as a player when your swag's like that, you play better. You reference Dion. We both watched Dion and Bo growing up. It's like, where is the line at? Because sports is weird, right? Some of the guys that are the most confident, got the most swag, they don't feel like they ever lose. They can go out they, and then they can they can back it up. And then it's but but when is that line too much for the team or what? It's such a hard line to to like walk mm -hmm. and and I've been kind of borderlinely obsessed with it my entire life because when I'm in shape, abs are feeling good. <laughs> I'm th my swag feel like my business is good. Like I feel I don't feel better than anybody. But back to what my my uh, one of my rel relatives said, I feel just as good. Yeah. And then I feel like if you're not, you know, coming at me with the work ethic, then I'm going to, I'm going to fucking win. So it's like, but does that sound like a, a total fucking dickhead? Like, but, but, <laughs> but in sports, if you play yeah. me in one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to believe, unlike Treadway, Tre <laughs> Treadway's always, I don't know, Treadway's always talking smack, but that's where it comes from though. Yeah. It comes from the black top. It comes from the work, the work ethic. And I know that that is a contributing factor of why I've had success. And that's same with a lot of athletes too. So it's like, how do you either help get guys there, or if you know they got it, tell them it's okay. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's a yeah. It's I, tough, I know exactly bro. You're saying it's it, it, like one the the line usually for you know you you want to keep it within your team. Like yeah. you you know you don't want to not. And I'll say that that line gets that line gets blurry too. But like, sure. you know you as long as you're celebrating your team or like trying to fire yourself your team up, that's one thing. When you start trying to like clown another team, that that to yeah. me is where the line where the line gets crossed. Uh, but if you like, you know, um, there, man, there's so many. Who was a great shooter for the Indiana Pacers? Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller. Mm -hmm. They said, you know, he he was like a, 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 a legendary trash talker. Larry Bird, legendary trash yeah. talker. Um, but they don't, they weren't doing it to like get under your skin. They do it to get themselves going. Yep. A lot of times. So um, there, when you're the the best thing that I can kind of the best way I can answer that is is that athletics is a performance. You're performing. You're on stage. That's you're on I stage. Like that. You know, and, and there's and there's an authenticity piece to that, too. But you also I mean, you see I've, I've, I've used this reference before. Like you watch relief pitchers come out of the pen. They're really quirky dudes. Like they, <laughs> yeah, they, they'll have a lot of times they'll have glasses or they'll they'll have like a funny little motion or whatever. But that's their, or a weird stretch. It, yeah. But they're yeah. they're in a high leverage game in front of 30,000 people yeah. and how many people. So they 
they get themselves going in different ways. Uh, but the legend, the OG, Coach Shally, used to say, pricks between the lines, perfect gentleman off the field. That was kind of his line. Mm, and, right. and it's the same. So I guess what I'm saying he is – He the word prick. Yeah, that's amazing. Isn't that cool? <laughs> He's like, we're going to be pricks between the lines, perfect gentleman <laughs> off. But, but that's where – how I judge someone now. Yeah. And I shouldn't say judge. I hate to, hate to use that word. But if as long as there are good people off the, off the yeah. field or off the court or whatever, like that's just them performing. You mm-hmm. know, they're, they're performing. They're on stage. They're, they're, they're having – like it's not normal what they're doing to try yeah. to to believe with full confidence that you're going to get a hit or you're going to make that jump shot or to run into another human being at full speed. So you sometimes have got to use these tricks to get yourself going. Now, when that when the when the whistle blows and it ends or, you know, when it's all over, then you walk off and hopefully that's where you can you can be a good guy, but um yeah, th- I, there's nothing wrong in my opinion in performance of of bo- I, I like I the way you broke it down though. That makes sense. And that's you know, uh, that's why I kind of back to what Brian talks, Brian Pierce talks a lot about, about the violence and peace thing that yeah. really like resonated with me because of the aggressiveness. I have to get out here, mm-hmm. but that doesn't then carry over to other stuff, but it's the same thing like between the lines, which is under the bar for us. It's different, different guy. I'm a different dude. And if you notice the, even this morning when I walked in, I don't talk to you in here. Like I don't, <laughs> yeah. not, 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 yeah, yeah, that's yeah. your space. Like yeah. I don't, I don't. Like yep. if if we if I catch in the parking lot, we're gonna chop it up. But I I realize that like I'm not gonna. Interfere. But I would feel the same way in the dugout. Yeah, I'm you not gonna I mean? interfere with your environment. Like yeah. this is this is this is you in a different. It's no different than if you're friends with the CEO and you know you may you may have a beer with him on the weekend. But if you see him in a business meeting, you don't go up and go, hey, what's yeah. up, dude? Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. you, how you doing, man? Good to see you. So I I think and, and what I was gonna say that that's really difficult for others to accept sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like meaning. Um, like, wait a minute, you know, so and so. I saw him out there. He's, you know, he's a jerk on the court or whatever. And now he's being nice over here. Oh, like, I think that's hard for that's, people. Yeah. And, and the same thing with coaching, by the way. Um, I, it's really hard for athletes to understand. I, you know, you you want me to do bicep curls, everyone cold, but but I may ride you ride you hard in practice, hard. Like then hard. you might not want to see me in there. <laughs> and then and then after practice, after when when it's over, I say, hey, Cole, man, tell your mom. I said hi and have a good have a good weekend. Make sure you guys have a good night. You know, study hard for your test. And they're like, wait a minute, you just yelled at me for you yeah. know. But like that's different. We're, I'm performing there, right? Like mm. that's that's us getting better. Now we separate, and I want you to have a great night, and I care about you as a human. I, so, anyways, I wonder if you upfront talk about that, like to the guys, mm. if if that's like. Cause that then it's like setting an expectation, like, hey, when we're between the lines, like I like that. We, you know, there's separation. We we do, I I do all and, and I think now with like today's athlete, you, you think, I think it's more important than ever to. to to explain it. Just say, hey, look, and I'll I'll ask them. I'll say, guys, like, to the, to the level you allow us to push, is is because that's we're not going to cross that line. But the level you allow us to coach, coach you hard, the mm-hmm. better off we're going to be. I say, you know, you know, we, at the end of the day, we got you. Like it, it as humans, as like we got you, but in this environment, like we're going to be playing in some tense games and, and there's only one way to simulate it yeah. <laughs> is to get after it. You know what I mean? So I think you're kind of always walking that line, but I, I think especially early in their careers, it's really difficult for them to like see me after I, after I got on them pretty good. And I say, Hey, what's up, Danny, how you doing? They're like, man, I'm yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Our, our coaches used to like basically say like practice was business meetings and then yeah. at, like practice was business meetings. So you go through that all week then the games were business trips. So you take care of business. And, True. Have, and then they always used to say after, like after the game, that's when we'll have fun. Yeah. So it was awesome. Cole, you need to be a coach, dude. You know, I would love you to. Know, you know, you, you also def- hype man. You, yeah. yeah. yeah dude, you should be like your turbo. I'm the director of, uh, what, we, uh, well, uh, Caleb Presley. He was at North Carolina. He was the director of morale. <laughs> yeah. That's me. That's me. You should be like See, a- the only thing that's taken me back from coaching is I like, since, I didn't go play college. Now, I know that's not an excuse. I can figure it out. Yeah, but yeah. I don't, like, actually know the game. Yeah. I know the culture. I know how to, like, coach and, like, lead and stuff like that. I know the position of linebacker. That's about you it. You should be so linebacker and assistant and often, or, yeah, or main strength line, coach. I ain't an X and O's, guys. I'm Kids a would fucking, fucking love you. The lines guy. Are you interested in X's and O's? Uh, I think I would be, but that's not really, you know, it, before, like, I got into here, my idea was going to school to be, like, come, like become a teacher. Mm-hmm. So I think the education, like, that leadership part is what excites me more than the X's and O's. And I would say that's probably the most, like, not, not that this would be a route for you, but to me that's th- – those two things combined. I mean, really good coaches are really good teachers, and you're always looking to how to get your content. 
mm-hmm. in the in the end user's hands and make it perform Mike Tomlin words, mm-hmm. make it make it come up in stadiums, make it arrive in stadiums, right? Like mm-hmm. yeah. you know, you, you so you're you know, whether it's film, whether it's language, whether where it's, where I think I could excel is the weight room. Like oh, being yeah. like being that like that's that my asset. Like the strength training for like high school, like most of the people don't know what they're doing now with like the four M crew and stuff like that. Do that, but you learn a lot of lessons in the weight room. I think that's where that's your that's avenue? where I could basically help yeah. the team. Yeah, and that'd be fun. Just even you could even do that as a side hustle someday, yeah. right? You know? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna find his. He gonna find his way into a weight room oh, yeah. nearby. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. a fact. <laughs> like, what's, who's a couple of people that you looked up to coaching wise? Like, whether you knew them or didn't know them. Like, who are a couple of the coaches you read their books or you kind of paid attention to? Like coming yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think when I when I was when I was an assistant. Like all I knew was the Marietta way, you know, and that and that's a valuable way, by the way. But I started just reading. I became a reader. So, like, well, other people were on on the well on the bus trips watching Happy Gilmore for the fiftieth time. Like yeah. I would, I'd be reading. You know, I was that guy. Um, so there was like some some influences there, like Bill Walsh, the Forty Nine ers coach. His book called "The Score Takes Care of Itself" that I still reference quite a bit. But uh, I would, Coach Corbett at Vanderbilt was the guy that I got to know okay. personally. Um, that really changed how I viewed baseball. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was un, it was an unbelievable thing, and then. You know, my mentor now is is, is Mark Shapiro, the the, the uh, guy, the president of the Toronto Blue Jays. While he's not a coach, he's a leader, and I I'm amazed how he shapes my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, just how he operates is is just something that's very aspirational to me. So I mean, I would say Coach Corbin was kind of like on, on the one path, and then um, you know, then 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 Mark is someone who I still you know is I would consider a friend and someone mm-hmm. who just. Teaches me daily without without me even knowing it. So um, seeing guys. how people like operate is it. I, I come back to that a lot because yeah. I think it's it, you got to be able to see what it really takes. Or when you're around high level performers, like man, they they just go. Like when I was around Arnold, like he just goes, bro. Mm-hmm. Like there wasn't no he'd be in Europe for some conference and he'd fly back and he'd ride his bike to the gym and then he'd be at you know, breakfast and he'd had a meeting there and then he'd be shooting content and then he'd be at the office for the archives. I mean, it was just like, dude, it's like 70. I'm like, just go. Like the operation was just like so high. And then the confidence was even higher. It was unbelievable. And, 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 and you know, I think I've talked to all you guys about this at some point, but like, I always want to share this because this is what I think is most amazing is that the busier, the per- the busier I would expect a person to be, the more present they are when they meet with you, it's it's hard it's hard to explain, but it's true. Like they have like they have a million things going on, but if I have a call scheduled from nine to nine thirty, that's the only thing. It, there's never an, an an eruption. There's never yeah. like they're fully with me, and that's something I try to. It, it's tough for me to do, um, but yeah, sometimes people think, oh that oh that person's so busy, that's why they're a jerk or whatever. Like just sometimes you'll hear that like in town yeah. or whatever. I'm like, no 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 no. I got I know some people who are really 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 busy and they don't operate. But they don't operate way. like that. They if they, they'll tell you no, like they'll say like I can't get fit you in, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Let's try next week. But if they give you that time, then they give you all of their time. Yep. And I I don't know how how else I can explain it other than that that feeling of being seen and heard and listened to is something that that I'm still working on but it's something that I've really tried to take away mm-hmm. from that from from those people. I've had that where I'm on a phone with somebody and they're like, "Man, I, I don't want to you know, I don't want to take away. I don't want to do this." I'm like, "Look, I'm I've set the time aside." That's right. So now let's 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 do what we're supposed to do here. That's, you know what I mean? That's a fascinating that's a fascinating point because I I used to I used to leave with that and it was it was Mark who said, "Hey, uh, let, let's not like this is this is the time we have Let's not waste our time, like yeah, talk, talking like about talking about, about why I'm giving I, you the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> not, like, oh, I know this is. I know your day's really busy, and I'm, I really appreciate it. It's like, no, cut it out. It like, is a it is a weird thing when people say that to me because I'm thinking like, well, no, I took the time because I wanted to spend time with you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so let's let's so talk. let's just keep it going. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyways, but that's that's something I've noticed with at least I don't even I wouldn't say all high performers. I would say people yeah. that are high performers that I admire. Yeah. yeah. Um they 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 have that humility to to really listen and go like everyone's going to be a, a learning opportunity mm-hmm. whether it's you know me or whoever. So Well cool. I think well, that's a good spot that you got. I got one, thing. one more go thing. Ahead, yeah. yeah. So like kind of going down like a, a different avenue slightly, but like um tying in like your like the the family dynamic with being like a high level D3 baseball coach. Like how does that kind of work? Do you kind of put up like hard boundaries or do you kind of see it as like integrating them into into that world or how does that kind of work yeah i wrote an article a long time called the work-life integration because that's the only way i think you can do it they have to be a part of what to to do a job like this 
it, it, it crosses the lines too much. Like I, so they have to be a part of, they have to be invested. Um, I'm not just saying this because you can't really say balance because it's there's, impossible. There's, there's no balance. I've heard, yeah, I've heard Tony I, Robbins say that exact. Yeah. How, that's how he puts it: is work life integration. Yeah, I think balance. maybe that's where yeah, I stole from at yeah. some point. But it's not. There's a balance is not the case. Like I'm in a I'm in the season right now of my life, like right now where there is no balance. Like my people cringe when you hear this, but my but my job comes first right now. Of course, if something pops yeah. off it's mm -hmm. but i'm saying i'm i'm gonna miss a ton of events i just missed my son's championship game on sunday like it, we get that the, the, i'll get that time back i also took a 10-day vacation this summer mm -hmm. no strings attached because of because of that it was that season mm -hmm. um and and i would say also like I, I i can't this is not my wife won't listen to this so it's, it's not like <laughs> I'm, not, shout I'm not shout out loud yeah i'm not <laughs> i'm not kissing up but but who you marry is really really important in life and you know my wife just she gets it like it's not maybe your best business decision it, it's it's without a doubt it's it's i, it, I tweeted I, that I, too i can't <laughs> i can't explain that enough like who, the, the person you spend a, you choose to, to to share life with is really important and she's like go get it like she under she understands what it, what it takes and mm -hmm. so i think that that's how you can make it work because i have her support to like to also support the kids to help you know try to blend all this but it is definitely an integration, not a balance. I, I saw uh, that firsthand because uh, our kids played baseball together. And he was gone with the Blue Jays thing for a few weeks. In the first week, you know, how many kids you got? Three? Four. Four. You know, she's corralling. All, I mean, yeah. they're all young, but she's got her Blue Jays shirt on. Yeah. At the, at the game the next day. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. well, I was just in it, man. She gets it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she And I think her biggest fear is that she's trying to hold me back. So, And then my biggest fear is that, that – I don't, I don't want her to have to like her whole life to revolve around me. Mm -hmm. So had, that, that's we've how had those conversations, that's how so. you work. Right. Like I think what they say, a mark of a great relationship is if we both ask you got the better end of the deal, you go, well, I do. Right. Mm -hmm. Like same thing in everything. That's, that's how, that's how I try to operate in business and everything else. Like I want like, Oh, like, man, I, I really, I really enjoyed this gym, man. That gives me so much. Well, I hope on the back end people say, well, you know what? He gives this gym a lot too. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yep. But if you operate from that space, yeah, I like that. I think that's you know same thing with your spouse, friends, or whatever. Like, give more, and, and so each person will go. Man, I, I'm the lucky one, yeah. Not, yeah. not the other way around. That's a good way. Damn, that's a good way to wrap it up. Drop it some knowledge. Oh no, go ahead. One more, one more, one more. Deacon, you're uh, you're like an honorary member of the Arms Army. Give oh, us your you. favorite thank bicep you. exercise because oh, you're okay. you know the the peaks looking big. Yeah, they are. You know, it's it, it, lately it's been that old school where I fall off the preacher because there's no seat there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, so, so every slightly preacher. busted. Yeah. So, so every but it's the preacher curl. Oh, yeah. wow. shout out! I, it's, I did I, an extra preacher curl today too. Oh, it's something else, man. Yeah. It's uh, there's and, and the mirrors right there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what size T-shirt do you wear? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the arms are, are triple X. But, yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. Man, yeah. good answer. Well, yeah. coach, it was awesome having you on, man. P appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, Brilliant. round table. I'm your boy Corey G. Small arms, Danny. At Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Brought to you by. MaxEverMuscle.com pre-extreme, extreme, extreme, and Sam Adams. We're out.